Jay Bhattacharya is a professor of medicine at Stanford University. He spoke out against lockdowns from the start and is one of the researchers in a recent study that found they didn't help. So the, the, um, the way that we looked at this is we, we looked at places, uh, in particular South Korea and Sweden, which in the early days of the epidemic did not put in place mandatory business closures and shelter in place orders. And what happened is there's no difference in the rate of spread in, in the early days of the epidemic. If you compare the group of countries that had less restrictive versus more restrictive uh, orders. The, the, the lockdowns, the very, very restrictive lockdowns did no better than the less restrictive lockdowns, the, the less restrictive policies. Other studies claim that millions of lives were saved by the lockdowns. How could there be such different findings within science? Yeah, so if you look at those other studies, most of them are the result of modeling. So these models essentially, they, they, they are an unrealistic depiction of how people actually act in the real world. The only way really to do this is by looking at real world evidence of have the lockdowns worked. And now I think there's something like on the order of 30 some studies that have that, that include the way we do. At the beginning of the pandemic, public health experts were assuming that coronavirus COVID-19 was far more lethal than it turned out to be. What were the numbers they were talking about before we knew more and what's it looking like to be now? So in, in, uh, I think it was early, fe late February, early March, the World Health Organization released a number that said that uh, the case fatality rate, that is the, the proportion of people that died with, co with cases of COVID would be 3.4%, you know, three or four out of, three to four out of 100. The death rate from COVID is something like 0 0.2 to 0.3%. Uh, and for old people, it's the survival rate is something like 95% uh, if you're over the age of 70. If you're under the age of 70, it's strikingly, it's 99.95%. 99.95%, five and 10,000 death rate. It's, it's a very, very high survivability if you're under the age of 70. So to be clear, at one time, Dr. Fauci testified to Congress that COVID was 10 times deadlier than the flu. Which means it is 10 times more lethal than the seasonal flu. I mean, I think, uh, I think it was a very misleading statement. Um, the, the discrepancy is that uh, those early estimates ignored the fact that there were you know, for every single person who was identified with symptoms of COVID, there were scores of other people that got the infection that never showed up because they had very mild infection. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I'm going to change. Uh, the, the policy implications were enormous, and they created a panic. I think when Fauci and the World Health Organization um, uh, sort of pushed those numbers out, which which was a mis it was a big mistake. Regarding this pandemic, are you concerned about? What happens to scientists today or science if for whatever reason, they're contrary to what other scientists or the government or the media or politicians want them to say? Yeah, I think I, I'm really concerned about that. Uh, there's been censorship of people who don't agree with the, with the government or with the with public health authorities, accusations, uh, false accusations uh, of, of conflicts of interest, um, that's calls for censorship within science. Uh, every, anytime someone expresses a view uh, that, that's contrary to what uh, Dr. Fauci says, they're accused of saying dangerous things. There is an enormous number of scientists, epidemiologists, and other people who don't agree with the, with the orthodoxy of the policy, the lockdown orthodoxy, uh, but we're very uncomfortable saying so for fear of being smeared. Um, I think science is going to have to learn uh, to, to address that, uh, this sort of groupthink mentality and this, this sort of this mentality that that attacks uh, uh, outside of the science can't proceed, science can't work unless there is the possibility of open discussion about fear of reprisal.